its 112-year legacy, the ANC has established the January 8th Statement, a tradition since 1972, as a pivotal moment where the National Executive Committee outlines the roadmap ahead for the year. Originally delivered by Oliver Tambo, with a focus on nation building at the time, the ANC now finds itself struggling to uphold some of its principles and failing to recapture the movement's past glories amid contemporary challenges. Good evening, welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Sizwe Mbofu Walsh. As South Africa inches closer to the all-important 2024 election, pressing issues such as unemployment, load shedding, and crime persist. And while internal party conflict simmer, the ANC remains South Africa's biggest party. As President Ramaphosa prepares his address, the critical question remains, can South Africans entrust the ANC with another five years of power amidst lingering citizen expectations and a struggling national agenda? And to answer some of these questions, we couldn't be joined by anyone better than the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Mr. Figile Mbalula. Mr. Mbalula, welcome to Unfiltered. We're very glad to have you. And could I begin our conversation, of course, with where the headlines are. Uh, I, I want to share a clip with you, uh, which comes from the chairperson of, of the party, Mr. Gwede Mantashe, in fact, your predecessor, and begin by just asking you to to respond to his statements. Let's have a look, and, and once again, thank you very much for joining us. I don't know if um, uh, th those were revelations. I think I, I, I listened very carefully to what he said as Secretary General. He's my Secretary General. I thought he was carried away by yourself, guys. <laughs> uh, he saw your cameras, he got taken away, <laughs> and he said things he should not have said. Uh, to me, uh, it's an issue that we will have to deal with it internally, that when you lead, you count every word you say. If you don't, you catch fire. Welcome back to Unfiltered. Uh, Mr. Mbalula, uh, we, we played the clip to, to set the tone. Of course, there have been many headlines about your statements around the Nkandla matter and President Zuma. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you and welcome back. And uh, I wonder how you respond to those, those comments from your chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, Sizwe, and uh, all the listeners of Unfiltered. And thank you for having us for the second time. And uh, we're coming you. to you live and direct from Bombela, where we will be hosting. Bombela will be hosting uh, 112 celebrations of the ANC. I am not going to respond to the national chair because uh, we've got uh, established, uh, we have established a way of doing things, uh, which is uh, not to talk to each other via the media. I am prepared uh, to respond to whatever I said that have raised an alarm, both positive and negative, which is to be expected about my address on Sunday. Uh, in Mchindi. The national chair, we have protocols. Uh, I've been trying to get hold of him the whole day, but I understand we're in the field and uh, I couldn't get hold of him. We've got protocols. Uh, we don't talk past each other. We don't talk in the media. Uh, we don't promote public spats. Uh, I'm available. I'm around. Uh, I'm open to counsel from elders and everyone. Uh, to give me guidance. Uh, I'm not uh, allergic to any criticism. So I am not, in respect of those protocols, going to be the first to break them. Mm -hmm. The national chair could have raised the issues with me uh, if uh, he's got uh, concerns about what I said. But nonetheless, I can get into the issues that are raised in relation to Nkandla Before we get uh, and there. the matters that are raised in the context to it. Absolutely, and, and we will delve into that. Before we get there, can, can I just ask, do you think that uh, the chairperson, uh, Mr. Mandashe, was, was wrong to go out in the media and criticize you and should have followed internal protocols in the same way that you aren't criticizing him publicly? Because he clearly did go to the media and cast aspersions over your leadership. 
Yes, he did, uh, which he's not supposed to. Uh, so I will leave it there. He's not supposed to do what he did. Uh, I will not uh, respond to the national chair uh, in the media. I sit with him every Monday. He was a secretary general himself. Uh, he did not have a smooth sailing secretary general term. Uh, so he knows what secretary generals are expected and the office of the secretary general, what is expected of it. So I leave it there, Sizwe, because uh, me and him, we meet every day. We are together here in Bombela. So uh, I will engage with him uh, with regard to those remarks. Uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, remind him about uh, the protocols of the organization. Uh, there is no supreme leader in the ANC who is allowed to do as they wish and uh, break protocols as and when it suits them. If the Secretary General has overstepped or done something that is wrong, he himself, the Secretary General, is not a demigod. He can be called to order, he can be guided, and uh, that is what uh, we follow. So I'm available and I'm not going to respond to my, to my national chairperson of the ANC through the media. And if he himself uh, had views that he has shared with everyone else uh, in public about me and casting aspersions on my character and leadership, he knows he should have done that uh, to me. So uh, I will leave it there, Sizwe. Let's come on to this, this question of, of your recent statements. A lot has been made of them. I think many people maybe haven't looked at them particularly closely. You've attempted to clarify what you meant when you said that uh, the way that the Nkandla matter was handled in Parliament amounted to the defense of Ubutoki. Uh, what is your current stance and what is your reaction to the reaction to your statements about the ANC effectively lying or, 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 or being untruthful in the way it defended President Zuma around Nkandla? Uh, first and foremost, uh, don't uh, people misinterpret what I said. And in, the second point is that his cause is into asitoliqua. Uh, I didn't say the ANC is a liar. I said the minister had the difficulty to explain he was sweating, uh, to explain the untruthfulness of explaining that uh, a swimming pool is a fire pool. It's a documented truth. Uh, it is well known. And uh, I was giving history. And I said that the ANC will respond, and the ANC will respond to everything that President Zuma has said from the launch of his party and uh, to date. And uh, I said to members of the ANC whom I was addressing there that uh, we have been dealing with uh, the Zuma question for over uh, 20 years. Professor Ndekiana characterized it as a Zuma exceptionalism. Now, we have been dealing with that exceptionalism for over 20 years, and I reminded them that there was Nganda, which we veered off and did things that we're not supposed to do. And if you forget quite quickly, Jackson Mtembu speaks to us from the grave. He apologized in Parliament in the manner in which the matter was handled. We faced a scathing court judgment delivered by Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng. And that uh, judgment directed the president to do certain things, including that he must pay. And uh, we all know where we are. Within 60 days, uh, they had to report back to the Constitutional Court on the execution uh, of uh, the court judgment, which included that uh, ministers Ndleko and others who were involved should be reprimanded. The Constitutional Court said the swimming pool is a swimming pool and uh, it must be paid for and all other things that needed to be paid for and that national treasury must work with everyone else to determine the cost which is what has happened 
And we know now that uh, President Zuma uh, was in debt of uh, 7 million for the payment of uh, the Nkandla uh, costs. So you've said that you seem to as Toli Kwan, and you're right, uh, since Okotileo is closer, that's for sure. Um, but I, I want to go to your specific words because I think a, a lot of what you have said has been taken out of context. And I want to go to specifically what you said because there's a part of it that I think does need to be, especially this term Ubukoki and exactly what it relates to. And so let's go to that and then we'll come back and, uh, and, and see your, your response to that. defense of our president, we went to parliament and opened an ad hoc committee and said a, a swimming pool is a fire pool. Yeah. 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 swimming pool, they own that. As I change as a fire pool, who minister? Who minister of police? Every leg cop and a selang at you are. Now, who want to put it? Lent of book, who can explain who talk? People have lost their careers. So, so again, I think just without being unfair to you, the, the upoki part, or what could be called lying, or at least untruthfulness, to defend upoki would be to knowingly defend a lie, if my translation is, is correct. Did the ANC know at the time that what it, it, was, been, what it, it was defending, okay. if, if I can just... Did the ANC know at the time that what it was defending was Ukoki? The ANC was given a report uh, uh, by those who were involved. They said that was a, a fire pool. Uh, and then the ANC went down to look into the swimming pool and it found that indeed it was a swimming pool. And then uh, you can follow the records thereafter, that uh, after the judgment, uh, there was a, a lot of uh, anxiety in the party about the fact that uh, some of the untruths were, 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 were spoon-fed to the party by people who were in positions of authority, which we know by now that in terms of the court judgment, a court judgment that those things that uh, a fire pool was a swimming pool were untruths and uh, the judgment was against us the courts decided that parliament took a wrong route of going via at a committee instead of taking the report on review and uh, it fell on president zuma and president zuma alone to do that and then uh, we took responsibility and the anc took collective responsibility for all the wrongs that happened then. And uh, we all know that those wrongs were corrected and uh, we were heavily punished for the untruths that uh, were found by the courts and the political parties rose in their, in their percentages from 5% uh, party to 10% because they took us to court. Jackson Mtembu admitted in Parliament that uh, we did not listen to our colleagues, which means uh, other parliamentarians, when it came to that particular matter. And therefore, uh, we are very sorry about that, and uh, we promised not to repeat such a thing again. So, so, so this can, is what can, I stated. So, Mr. Mbaluna, I said, can, can I just he was defending, can I just come in Let here? me explain. Well, no, no, I, I, will okay. give you, I will give you ample time, and we still have nearly, nearly 45 minutes to go, so we're still, still early. But the question I wanted to know, you've taken us through the legal history and, and that's appropriate. And yes, the Constitutional Court castigated former President Zuma for, for Mkandla. But what I think was interesting about what you said was it seemed as if the ANC knew that what it was defending was wrong. But simply because former President Zuma was the president at the time, you, de you decided to defend him even though you knew it was a lie. And that was very troubling because it caused people to ask, well, are you doing that over other things? Are you, have you done that over Borsasa? Have you done that over uh, questions like Pala Pala? So I think the key question is, did the ANC know, not necessarily did the court tell the ANC that what Zuma, uh, uh, former President Zuma did at the time was wrong? 
And Sizwe, we are talking post facto and dealing with the present in relation to what happened uh, in the past post facto yeah. about uh, Nkandla. And in this particular instance, I'm relating historical facts that uh, this is what happened to us. Obviously, when all those things happened, up until the ANC as a party was corrected, uh, it thought that uh, it is doing the right thing. But it was proven uh, through the process and uh, diagnostic process of the court processes that uh, what they were defending was, was incorrect. Okay. So we even took a collective responsibility for that. Yes. Let's, and uh, yeah. that was incorrect and that uh, there were untruths in what we were actually defending. Yes. Let's go to a break and we'll come back and ask other questions about uh, the formation of uh, the MK party, about the health of the ANC and the future in 2024. Don't go anywhere. Stick with us on Unfiltered. We're in an exclusive conversation with the ANC Secretary General Figile Mbalula. Welcome back to Unfiltered. We're in a fascinating conversation with ANC Secretary General Figile Mbalula. Mr. Mbalula, of course, uh, another issue that's been making the headlines is the formation of the Mkondo Esizwe Party. Uh, former President Jacob Zuma has on the one hand said that he remains a member of the ANC, but he is go not going to support the ANC in this election and will support uh, the Mkondo Esizwe Party. I want to spend some time on this, but before we do that, I, I, I want to uh, just play a clip of what you have said about what this means for former President Zuma in the ANC, and then we can, we can uh, dive deeper into that further. Let's, let's have a look at that. Wafuli political party, wapula umka kusiseko umbu. Simsa wei pitizi. Wambi ila lomtu do. He is in control of his life. When he will not tanda, into a tanda I am. Not going to take him to DC. He has already expelled himself from the ANC. So, Mr. Mbalula, uh, your stance is he's already expelled himself from the ANC. Do you, do you not think there's any formal process necessary on that? Uh, well, thank you, Sizwe. What, what uh, uh, the, the, the departure of President Zuma from the ANC, he has deliberately made it to be complicated when he has in fact uh, left the ANC by forming a political party which we knew for quite some time uh, but uh, we didn't believe it that uh, indeed this could be true uh, but now uh, it is water under the bridge he has formed the party own up to it and is leading it and uh, he is busy recruiting people uh, to join him in the party in the ANC is recruiting within the ANC He's recruiting even senior leaders of the ANC, uh, talking to them to join him in this party. And then uh, he has said that uh, he has not left the ANC, uh, but uh, he's asking people not to vote for anyone but uh, vote for this party. I think uh, in the past few weeks, admittedly, he has gone out public and say, City Labo, it is us who own that particular party. And uh, he, has, he, has, he has, from one rally to the other, demonstrated uh, beyond a reasonable doubt uh, that uh, he is the ar architect behind uh, and the brains uh, be behind the party. So uh, that's what we are explaining there. You don't expel somebody who has decided to leave. Of course, uh, when he says he's still a member, Technically, you've got to look at it, and even politically, uh, about what does that mean. So the ANC have resolved in the National Executive Committee that uh, we will respond to this matter. It happened on the 16th of December, and uh, we don't want to make President Zuma our manifesto. So we must respond and rebut some of the untruths that uh, have been peddled by him.
Uh, and um, we will respond politically and ideologically to this uh, party uh, at the right time. We have said that. Um, the NEC was quite anxious to say we must do it now. We felt that we must not do it. Even myself, I outlined the process and the fact that uh, we are going to respond. However, it is quite clear that uh, I went overboard um, because we don't want to respond in snippets, you know, and uh, in breaks, ad hoc. Uh, to a big thing like what President Zuma has done. We, we need to explain to the people of South Africa what does that mean. Where do we come from with President Zuma? Because he's saying a lot of things, both in public and in private, to many people and different people. So we need to clarify that. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and articulate the position of the movement with regard uh, uh, to this party. But for now, we have to explain to our members that Umkonto uh, uh, is a party, it's not ANC uh, party, and uh, uh, our members must stay with the discipline that they've shown uh, in the organization. On our part, we are challenging uh, the existence of that party, and we did from May this year. We won the case uh, in the IEC. The second one uh, were given technicalities why it was thrown out and the party was recognized. We are now, uh, today, I signed the papers uh, challenging the patent, the trademark of the party, because that is the ANC trademark, Umkonto Wesizwe. We will challenge that. And then secondly, we are going back uh, to the uh, uh, electoral court uh, because uh, those are our colors. And then uh, this party has got the potential to confuse people. As you would have seen in the ballot, you've got political parties that have the same colors as ours, and they simply don't campaign and they just get people voting for them. So we are not opposed in any way for anyone forming a political party, but not using our own assets to do so. At least we've got an obligation to challenge those, and we will be asked by the membership of the ANC. When President Zuma formed Umkonto Wesizu and turned it into a party, what steps did you take as leadership? We must account that right. we did challenge, and then uh, if our challenge becomes successful, then that will be good for the ANC. So you've said a lot of, of interesting things there, and, and I want to home in on a few of them. The first is, is the decision that the ANC has taken, which is, which is a fascinating one, not to go down the formal expulsion route. And I suppose I can understand in some ways the, the logic and the strategy of that, because you don't want to make former President Zuma a martyr. You don't want this to become a, a, an even bigger story in some ways. The, the counter side of that, and I appreciate you, you're in something of a difficult position, is, is if you don't formally expel him, and he maintains he's a member of the party, then what happens if he attends party events? I mean, as an ex officio member of the NEC, he could, in theory, come to an NEC meeting. What would happen if he hasn't been formally expelled via the Constitution uh, in that kind of scenario? Would you, would you, as a party, not be on the back foot there? Not ex officio, sorry, um, but as an honorary president. I have said that... Uh, pre pre okay, yes. I have said that uh, President Zuma uh, and his uh, withdrawal from the ANC, he has made it complicated uh, and uh, politically uh, define it as not leaving the ANC, but leaving the ANC of Ramaphosa. Mm. We will clarify that because there is nothing like an ANC of Ramaphosa. We will, we, will, we will still clarify those issues, and we will also clarify his standing in relation to the ANC constitution. Those matters, we are coming to them, can, not now. Can, can you, we will come to what, them, and that's what I was not, explaining. To, why not to, now, to, to the, uh, uh, That is what, yeah. sorry, let, sorry, let yeah, me... Sure, let, sure, but I'm, I'm just interested because... Uh, it's because... Mm. It, 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 mm. Okay. That is why I was explaining to you that uh, we don't want to deal with this matter ad hoc, mm. uh, piece by piece. We want to deal with it holistically. And that's what we are going to do.
So we will clarify the issue of his membership to the party, whether we take him through the DC process or not. But as we speak, he's gone. He's as good as gone. He's decampaigning the party. He's attacking the leadership of the party. He's blaming all the things that himself he was overseeing. That were challenges our government face on the ANC. So that's what he's doing uh, at the present moment. So he's gone. He's as good as gone. Now, what the ANC must do as a responsible party is to explain that move unprecedented that a former president of an organization like us 2024 can move out of a part of the party and form normally people just uh, uh, retreat and uh, demobilize but they don't do what president zuma has done so we may think it is small it is not small uh, because we live in a world of politics uh, which are vibrant in our country. So there's no way the issue of Zuma is not going to be with us, especially the ANC and us explaining ourselves. So we've got to explain ourselves thoroughly from the statement he made and from including how we characterize this move and what exactly is this Mkonto Ezizu. You know, and uh, over and above that, we have taken steps. We are challenging this legally because that is our asset. We will respond at an appropriate time to this matter. It's just that uh, 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 we don't want to respond to this matter ad hoc. Today, Mbalula, like I was speaking at Mjindi, and then I spoke about Nkandra. I've been chased uh, and misinterpreted deliberately that I confessed. What did I say at Mjindi that did not happen in this country? Okay. about Nkandla and President Zuma and the standing of the ANC in society. So, so we don't want that. And I will accept any criticism that says, no, SG went overboard because we agreed that we'll respond to this matter. So we will respond to Sizwe mm. comprehensively. Can I, can I ask you then, and, uh, can, can I ask our you, structures are clearly can I ask guided you to, to, to respond on this, to this matter. Then? I, yeah. I, I hear you on, on, on that stance you've taken. But... This could, this could be a serious blow to the ANC in a place like KwaZulu-Natal. We know that every vote there is going to count in 2024. And that province is so big that it could have a spillover effect onto the national picture. Are you worried that former President Zuma's announcement of the MK party could seriously hamper the ANC's election prospects and bring it below that 50% or... Uh, certainly in KZN, but nationally as well, because this is something we've never seen, a former ANC president formally coming out against the party. Against the party. Any leader of the ANC uh, who can live like President Zuma does will affect the party negatively. We have had uh, political parties that were formed by credible people. I mean, Sam Shiloh was one of our best performing premiers in Gauteng. He left government without a scandal. He ran Gauteng like a proper economy. Uh, that's what he did. I mean, he left the ANC. And uh, we, we, we were mesmerized, but at the same time we managed to catch up. And uh, for whatever that President Zuma's departure is going to be like when it comes to party support, is it stand to be observed, but uh, we are preparing ourselves for a, for a bigger, not a battle, but war. And we're confident that uh, we will emerge out of that. And uh, obviously, there will be members of the ANC will go that direction. But if you look at this party, Largely, people who are going there are not disgruntled, are people who are affected by behavioral issues and uh, disciplinary issues and conduct uh, in the ANC, which generally uh, has been an albatross on the party. With the formation of this party, everybody has gone there and found a political nest to go and rest. And then we expect that uh, it will happen. When people don't get what they want, when people are affected by the renewal program of the ANC and they believe that this ANC is no longer for them because of the renewal, they, we expect that they will jump 
and then they will go. And uh, it will be unrealistic and uh, untruthful to tell you that uh, President Zuma's move in KwaZulu-Natal or even anywhere else in the country will affect the ANC. It stand out to be seen how the ANC will rise to, to, to the occasion uh, when it is confronted with such a challenge. It's not for the first time. This might be different. But uh, something like this did happen. I've given you Sam Shilowa's example, even Tara Likota. Uh, Tara Likota had left after being chairperson of the ANC for more than 10 years. Those were credible uh, leaders of the movement who left untainted in the ANC, who did not do anything wrong uh, in the public eye. They went and formed a party and challenged the ANC, uh, but they did not win. So we, we stand to see this one. Right. And like let's, I said, let, we, yeah. we are looking at it. Let's leave it there for We're now, We're not taking it for granted. Uh, that is what I can tell you. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go to a break and we're still uh, going to delve deeply into many of the things that have been said there, as well as some other questions about the ANC's governance record as it goes into 2024 and the overall health of the party as the party reflects on where it is ahead of the January 8th statement. Stick with us on Unfiltered. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Unfiltered. We're in conversation with ANC Secretary General Figile Mbalula. Mr. Mbalula, before we went to the break, we were just discussing the formation of the Mkondo Wesizwe Party and former President Jacob Zuma's breakaway uh, from the ANC. And you were saying that this has happened many times. Um, of course, we've had prominent figures within the ANC leaving the ANC. You cited COPE examples. Uh, of course, there's also uh, EFF, uh, Julius Malema being expelled, um, of course, made his name as ANC Youth League president. But one thing that is quite different about this moment is, is a former president. So with, with COPE, we, we, had, we didn't quite have former president Thabo Mbeki actually creating a new party. And I, I take your point, you know, there were big figures. Shiloa and, and Lekota were, were big figures in the ANC. But whew, former president Zuma is, you know, he, he is the ANC. Uh, he, he stood by the ANC for so long. And so for a former president to come out, it feels like it's different in kind to what we've seen before. Yes, uh, it, is a, it, is a, it is a shocking result politically. Uh, you wouldn't expect uh, such a thing to happen uh, to people like President Zuma. Like I said... Uh, you would expect uh, people like him, if they are not happy about something, to demobilize. Uh, but uh, really to stand up and form a political party and challenge the ANC is unprecedented. Uh, so we, we are disappointed about that because when you talk about preservation of heritage, uh, people like President Zuma and former presidents belong to that heritage of unbreakable record and commitment and loyalty to the liberation movement, which is the ANC. So President Zuma has broken that record by all means. He has broken it. Um, and he basically said that I am moving away from this convention. Uh, I'm going to form a party and challenge them. And the basis of my challenge is that I'm not challenging the ANC, I'm challenging Ramaphosa's ANC, which I'm saying we will respond to it. So that's what uh, he has basically uh, done, um, uh, uh, Cizwe. And just, just one more thing on this before we move to other questions. I was interested to hear you say, and I know you have also said it once before, that you already knew about this potential move in May. Can you give us some insight into how you became aware that this might be happening? Well, we knew that there was a meeting that took place and decided that uh, there should be a formation of Mkonto Wesizwe, and which it was done. And then we challenged it around May, around April, May, and then we won. And then the second uh, round of it was approved by the IEC without our knowledge. And the account of the IEC to us about it was that uh, 
uh, we did not monitor the government gazette. So we challenged them and then uh, they dismissed our case and uh, registered the party. So we are challenging this uh, in the electoral court. Uh, we are also challenging it in terms of the trademark. So that is, the, that is what uh, we are doing uh, right. at the present moment. So and, and you mentioned... The party was in the works. Um, yeah. in, the, in the last uh, election, uh, there was also a, a formation of a political party, which one is in parliament right now, uh, which uh, former President Zuma was linked to it um, and uh, encouraged its formation at least. And then, uh, and uh, former Secretary General of the ANC. So we just uh, let that, that slip, you know, because uh, it was not important for us to be pursuing such. Um, the ATM, now the ATM I, down, I suspect you, things, you're talking about there has denied that. I don't. I don't want. I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I didn't mention the name deliberately. Well, so is there I'm just any, saying. Is there any other party uh, that we, 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 we? No, I didn't mention the name deliberately. Uh, there are many. Uh, proliferation of political party strategy has been with us for now over five years. There are many parties uh, that challenging that former the renewal Zuma. agenda of the ANC. Right. Just, just, one, just one more thing. You mentioned that there are senior ANC leaders who you know are going to go to that party. Who, who are these ANC leaders that will be joining? I, I, didn't say, I, I didn't say that I know they are going to go. I said they have been recruited. They have been spoken to and I don't need to uh, raise their names here in public uh, because I'm just giving you a, a hint. We are aware they have been recruited even in our national executive committee. Some of the comrades have been spoken to and some have come forward to report that they are not going to go that direction. Uh, but uh, it's not a, a really huge pool of uh, leaders and so on. But uh, he's been speaking to a lot of ANC cadres and activists on the ground as well. Uh, to basically join uh, Umkonto as a party, and many comrades have rejected right. uh, let's, the let, recruitment and uh, let's, the call let's come on to, to join MK party. Yeah. Let's come on to some, some wider questions about the ANC and, and the health of the party. Um, I want to put a clip to you uh, of former President Ramaphosa just talking about how he thinks the party is actually in a stronger position now than it was in, in the past. And, and get some of his thoughts about the unity of the movement. Uh, let's bring up that clip and then we'll, we'll get your reaction to it, Mr. Mbalula. This is a very special day and a celebratory day for the ANC. We are 112 years old. There aren't many parties that I know of that have reached that age. We're still alive. We're still kicking. We're getting stronger. We are becoming more united, more cohesive, and uh, we are looking forward to Saturday when we will have thousands at the stadium. So that's President Ramaphosa actually stating the opposite case that, you know, the ANC is in a strong position. It's, it's feeling good going into this election. What are your assessments of where the ANC is? You've been in the party for a very long time. You've served in multiple capacities. How would you diagnose the ANC's current position? Um, we are in a good space. We are still mass-based. If you read uh, my annual report, <coughs> I submitted uh, to the National Executive Committee, which will circulate uh, widely for the populace and our structures. You will see that uh, the ANC exists in every corner of uh, of this country and uh, we have existing structures we have members who are ready to dirty their hands and serve the people and uh, we, are, we, we have grown as a party from a point of uh, uh, quality membership and uh, some of the challenges we face are resolving themselves uh, through the renewal project uh, we are actually implementing as a party 
Uh, you may look at things in a negative way with the formation of other political parties, but uh, equally, in the same breath, is resolving a whole lot of things. Uh, if you look at uh, the past year, some of the people who were a headache, not even campaigning for the ANC, decampaigning the ANC whilst they were inside, they've left. And it's not a loss, honestly, to the ANC because they never worked for the party. Uh, they've joined other political formations uh, in the country and they've left the ANC at peace with itself uh, to realize its objectives of serving the people of South Africa. Because the people of South Africa have said to us through the research we have conducted, they are sick and tired of our squabbles in a party fighting. And that is why I was saying uh, it's not in the best interest of the ANC leaders to be arguing about different point or anything in the public and that is why we've taken a, a position about that if you look at our list process it has been peaceful calm uh, not like uh, you you have uh, challenges there and there there's been an uh, order in the party there is decorum when there is a challenge normally like uh, MK party formation, you would have had 15 ANC leaders speaking on the same matter. It has not happened. Not a single leader of the ANC have spoken about uh, this party because comrades now understand the center holds. The party has got a voice and it will speak for itself. So uh, the semblance of a party that is moving in a direction through what we call unity of purpose is there for all to see. And uh, my job working with the collective is to ensure that uh, this center does hold. And uh, that is what we are doing. We don't trail government in terms of what it does. Uh, we speak for ourselves. We have, uh, you know, um, uh, visibly uh, entrenched the character of ANC of internationalism. Uh, we are very much active with our sister parties in terms of consolidating our working relations. We are very much uh, not just vocal, campaigning very hard uh, in our internationalist uh, character for self-determination of the people of Palestine, of Western Sahara, which is what the ANC really stands for, anti-imperialist uh, organization, which is what we are. And, uh, you know, we are growing in stature. You will see uh, over time, if we move in this direction, uh, in about 10 years, the ANC uh, will be restored to its uh, former glory. And that is what we are about. And uh, we are not, uh, you know, uh, daily dallying when we deal with wrongfulness in the party and all of that, albeit difficult. We are not there where we are expected, but we have taken strides. And what about the financial health of the party? Uh, I was interested to see towards the end of last year that you managed to settle the Ezuluni uh, investments, or at least enter settlement conversations with Ezuluni investments, uh, nipping that in the bud. Uh, the financial health of the party, there were, there were problems with salaries many years ago. That doesn't seem to have, have reared its head as much. Where is the financial health of the party, and are you convinced that the ANC is on a stable financial footing going forward? We have implemented, uh, uh, and which is what we are doing at the present moment, reorganized HQ, brought uh, skilled people in that HQ, uh, political education. You've got David Bakura, who's a former premier and uh, a dedicated and loyal activist and a cadre of the movement at Lutuli House. Uh, Phoebe Potchiter is dealing now with our research Myself, the TG, we are full-time at Lutuli House. Mdun Tuli is heading elections. Nom Vola is dealing with international as well as elections. Uh, we have now uh, dealt with a bigger challenge of uh, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, living within our means. Because in the past, you will find that uh, the ANC have got a bloated salary bill. You've got more drivers, more, uh, more drivers in the system and no cars to drive. 
you know. Uh, so we, we are implementing an organizational structure at HQ of professionalizing the party and living within our means. Uh, of course, our financial situation will always be on and off uh, because uh, we are not uh, generating profit. Uh, we are relying on uh, money we get from the IEC uh, and, and so on. And there and there you get uh, donors to, uh, to support us. So we, we are spending correctly with the new TG and the new leadership and the new organizational structure and reorganization we have adopted at national conference that is guiding us in terms of uh, running the party and strengthening headquarters like never before headquarters of the anc used to be just a shell you know and people when they think about the anc they think about government only today we have built and we are trying we have not arrived yet to give lutuli house not just a building but a stature of political leadership right and that right. is what uh, we are doing on a daily basis now as, as we come to a close mr mbalula i guess i want to turn our attention to the first issue you and I discussed in our first interview, you may remember that I spoke to you about unemployment. And I think there's a sense in the country, a widespread sense, that people are really hurting. It's been a tough economic time. COVID-19 didn't help. But as we've come out of that, the economy has, has you know, not rebounded in the same way that many other global economies have rebounded. People are struggling to put food on the table. People are not finding jobs. Poverty is, is deep. When you go back as Lalin, you see the, the depth of the poverty. What is the ANC's message on this? Because I think this is probably the hardest question for the party going into 2024. You have been governing, you have had the power, and yet the promises on the economic front, let's, let's be frank, they haven't come to fruition. What is your message to the people of South Africa as we go into this election that, that can convince them that you can turn a ship around that hasn't been turning around under your leadership? We, we need a, a formidable growth plan for the economy uh, uh, going forward, and uh, which is what uh, in this term, uh, going into wrapping up uh, our last days in office, this government must produce that uh, formidable growth plan, which will focus on uh, sectors, different sectors and building compacts. As it has started from last year, we have finished the whole term without recession, affecting us despite uh, other economies facing similar ch facing challenges of economic recession. To be fair, we also uh, haven't had much, indeed, much growth. Uh, we have been that. able to recover we have, yes, that is what I'm talking about, a formidable growth plan. A growth plan that talks to job creation in relation to uh, industries in the economy that uh, will ensure that there is economic uh, growth. Automobile industry and all of, all of that is very important for the growth of the economy. So but there are you, many opportunities, so we you, need to be bold in terms of close. what we need to do to... to, to, to to, uh, the, the, to bring the, the jobs difficulty, into the economy. The yes? difficulty with the message of, of creating a new plan is, is you did promise in the last manifesto, and indeed in manifestos before, that this would happen. Why would it happen now if it hasn't already happened before? I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about a new plan. I'm saying you said a within the context of the recovery plan, we have recovered more, job, we, we, we have, we have recovered more jobs now. Uh, from the COVID. And then uh, what I'm saying, I say we need a formidable growth plan, meaning we need to consolidate what we've got, what we've got now to focus on economic growth that create jobs. That's what is important for the economy. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. And I'm saying when we get into wrapping up this term, that's what uh, we'll be focusing on uh, in, in this month. Right. Uh, going forward uh, to ensure that that plan uh, 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 bear results uh, uh, going forward. Mr. Mbalula, we want to thank you very much for availing yourself for public scrutiny and the questions of Unfiltered. This is the second time you've joined us, so 
We really appreciate your time and taking the time out to speak to us at this crucial time for the party. We're just going to go to uh, a poll on, on social media and uh, the question asked was, has the ANC lost SA's confidence? 86% said yes, 13% said no. But of course we know that uh, South Africa's polls still show the ANC as the, the biggest party in South Africa. And of course we go into an important election. I hope Mr. Balula, before the election, we can speak to you again about specific election issues and uh, the 2024 polls. But once again, thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank you very much. See you in Bombela. Thank you very much and thank you for having us. Amanda. See, see you in Bombela. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us on Unfiltered this evening. It's been a fascinating conversation getting into the mind of the ANC Secretary General and therefore the party. We spoke about the formation of the MK party, comments about the Firepool saga, as well as the health of the ANC and the South African economy. Let's continue this conversation on social media. Thank you for joining us for another installment of Unfiltered News, Unfiltered Views, and Unfiltered Conversations.